Canada, but way, way, way down to the south. And at 11 o'clock at night, um, we are joined uh, from South Africa. Now, Seb, I've got to ask you if you're okay with the fact that I've been describing you as the uh, uh, jazzy Segovia of South Africa. What do you think about that connection? Is that is that is that okay? <laughs> um. I think it'll do. I think uh, it matches the the name that we have for you down in Durban. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, the the Great White. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we know where some of that came from. But um, yeah. yes, uh, so I am joined by uh, Seb Goldsway, Sebastian. Um, that's a that's what is, is. What would your your mom say to you when you were in trouble? What what did she call you? Oh, she she gave me she give me all the syllables. Uh, full Sebastian. Yeah, there you go, Sebastian. Mm, maybe if you maybe a few extra syllables, uh, d just oh, to make yeah. sure you knew you were in trouble. Yeah, we all we <laughs> all had that when we were kids. You were a kid a whole lot shorter time ago than I was, however, uh, as everybody can tell. Uh, but um, so on was it Sunday evening? I think I uh, I caught that you were doing. A, um, a live Facebook uh, thing because, well, you're sort of like uh, more in jail than we are here in in the United States. Uh, would that be a, a, a good way of putting it? I well, I'd put it like this: I've been out of my house twice in the last three weeks to go shopping, and uh, that's it. We're not allowed to leave our houses at all. At all. So you can't go. All. You can't you, go for a walk. No, 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 no. You, you you can go to the shops to buy supplies, and if you work in essential services, then you're allowed to go out. But apart from that, you have to be in lockdown. So essential services would not include performing on the guitar. I think they should, but sadly they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so now you obviously you, you travel around, you do a lot of performances like that. But do you do any teaching and things like that? Um, a little bit, mostly on Skype these days. So thankfully, right. um, yeah, I, I, that carries on as normal. Right, right, yeah. I could imagine, yeah, because um, um, my son did some uh, guitar studying with Jason Truby, if you're familiar with Jason Truby. Yes, from POD. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, and that was done by Skype, too. So I guess that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So how long have you been uh, strumming that, uh, that, uh, that instrument? I have been playing since I was since I started high school, so uh, I was 13 years old. So that would be 15. I've been playing for 15 years now. 15 years now. So, uh, yeah. so it wasn't. So you weren't a child prodigy, but it was just something you <laughs> you decided to you know pick up and 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 do, or or did it sort of capture your your attention, or what? So, so that, that's a that's a funny story, and uh, for that I, I thank my my mother. It's all her fault. Um, <laughs> I I went to I started high school. I went to a, a boys only boarding school, and I went away for two weeks. I wasn't allowed to have contact with my parents. And when I came back, my mother had bought me a guitar and said, "Well, I thought you might want to start guitar lessons." Um, and I said, N "No, thank you." But she had already bought the instrument, so I thought, "Well, I'll I'll start it and do the lessons for a month or so to keep my mother happy." And uh, well, uh, <laughs> guitar got very cool, and mathematics got very boring very quickly. I think um, so. Child prodigy or teenage rebel, you know, somewhere, <laughs> right, right, some, somewhere there, leaning towards the second. Uh, so, are, are you indicating that it may have had some negative impact upon your scholastic studies, possibly? P possibly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, when did it uh, become, you know, your your passion, though? I mean, uh, around then, did you? When did you know that this was what you were going to be doing? Um, I. It was about um, uh, my just before my last year in high school. Um, especially in South Africa, we don't have much of a music industry, mm. um, so people tend to, uh, you know, the, the the prevailing mindset is that. Um, you can't make money doing music and you either have to make it very big, like you have to be like Bruce Springsteen big or otherwise you're never going to make it. Right. And um, the school I was in had a very, very good um, school choir. And so we, we traveled to Austria to go to the World Choir Games mm. and we won uh, three gold medals and a silver medal. And we competed against 5,000 other choirs from around the world. And just to see so many people doing music and seeing, you know, like how joyous music is and um you know just what a big infrastructure there is um across the world was very very influential for me and it was then that i decided that even if i can't make it i'm gonna try <laughs> so i've been 
stuck. I've been stuck at it ever since. So, uh, so you already committed yourself to a life of poverty. So the lockdown is just sort of more of the same. Oh, it's it's what I've been waiting for my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but was your wife waiting for that? Uh, her whole life is the question. Well, I gave her. I gave my wife. Bless her. I gave her a very stern talk on like the second date we ever went on. I said, just so you know, I'm a musician. This is this is how things go. So she's 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 been well prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> now it was uh, sometime in 2018. I was I was there. Right? Was that? Uh, do you do you remember? Yeah. I think it was 28. I forget when it was. Um, it might have been 2017. Might it have been really? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think it was the. First, first year of my marriage, yes, so 2017, I think. Okay, all right, yeah, because yeah. I don't remember if you were married yet. Yes, I just, just, just got married. I had just gotten married, okay. And so yeah. I spoke at the church. Um, do, you have, uh, do you do music there? Are you on staff there? Yes, I'm on staff. I'm the music director at my local church, Hillcrest Baptist Church. Okay, And right. uh, that, that keeps me very busy. Um, so it's kind of like 50% that, 50% the performing career, I think. Okay, except down there in South Africa, churches are uh, cannot meet either, right? Uh, no, def definitely not. Right, right. Um, so uh, that keeps you, because I, I do say, you came to the U.S., did you come to the U.S. recently, or were you going to be going yeah. to the U.S.? You came to the U.S. recently. Yeah. Yes, I went to Nashville um, and Mobile, Alabama in, in August last year for the, the SYNC conference with the, with the Gettys. Oh, okay, okay. So you've been to Nashville. What, do you, what did you think of Nashville? Uh, James, it was, it was heaven on earth for, <laughs> for me. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely phenomenal. And, and people probably went, oh, what a wonderful accent you have. You just sound so smart. Yeah, where are you from? New Zealand or <laughs> New Zealand, Australia, England, anywhere from there? Right, right, right. Does not not probably didn't guess South Africa is one of the first uh, first options Never. there. But you, did you yeah. get to perform there and and you know jam with people? Uh, a little bit. Um, uh, so I got to play at Christ Fellowship Baptist Church in Mobile, Alabama, um, where my my former pastor has just taken over. Um, he's just been installed as the pastor. That would uh, that was Steve Lawson's old church. Oh, um, down down in Mobile. Yeah. So he he just settled in. I think they'd been there for five weeks, and um, we were going to the states. So they had us down, and I led the worship on one Sunday. Oh, well, that's that's neat to get an opportunity to do that. I hope we get to do things like that in the future. I'm not 100 yeah. percent certain uh, these days, but. Um, we will enjoy it all the more if we do have the opportunity of doing so in the future. How right. would you how would you describe how would you describe what you do? Because you obviously do some classical sounding numbers, but you also do a lot of jazzy type stuff. I mean, what are the major influences? Um, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I just I steal from everywhere and everything. I mean, I grew up playing classical guitar and then I fell in love with rock and roll and with blues and then I decided I had to make some adult decisions in my life when I finished high school so I uh, had to do a degree and the choices were classical or jazz so I chose jazz okay and so my formal study is in jazz and I do Chet Atkins style finger picking now so um, that all just you know from Jimi Hendrix to Chet Atkins to Segovia just meshes together in whatever I come up with, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did find out someone, uh, if you if you were listening when I announced, when we were talking back and forth uh, earlier in the week and uh, came up with the idea of having you on, uh, someone sent me uh, something from the internet that indicated it was March of 1981 that Segovia performed at Arizona State University, and that's what I, that was my senior year in high school. I graduated in June of 81. So uh, I did okay. get to see him, and we were only about three rows back in the Grady wow. Gamage Auditorium. So I saw the master at work. He was in his 80s and wow. was still just, um, just utterly amazing. You could sort of oh, tell, absolutely. though, he was, he was very hunched over from all of those years, having his <laughs> arms around a guitar. So may I suggest some kind of maybe rowing, um, some type <laughs> of some, some type of, of thing where you're pulling you're pulling back uh, because um, at eighty something he was 
he was rather round, uh, and it was because of that those shoulders just over that guitar for all those hours. I can't imagine how many yeah. hours Segovia spent uh, hunched over a guitar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help with computers these days. So I'm either hunched over a guitar or hunched over a laptop. So That's right. It's, uh, That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would I would do some back exercises if uh, if you because <laughs> you're young right now. But trust me, after about 45 and then especially 50, uh, stuff starts hurting and and you can't eat. You, the th sad thing is you can't remember why it's hurting. It just it just starts yeah. and you, you don't really know what to do about it. So, so now, <laughs> now tell us about this super duper guitar you were talking about on Sunday. What do you what did um, what what you got there? Well, uh, so this is a um, I have here. This is a brand of guitars. Uh, it's called a, a, a Loudon, and uh, these are kind of boutique snobby guitars um, <laughs> made in. Uh, you should see acoustic guitar snobs are a diff they're a different level. They talk about woods and all sorts of things that I can't keep up with. And oh sure. This is one of those one of those guitars uh, that belongs in that echelon of um, guitar collectors, I think. Except I use it as a piece of state as a piece of stationery, I suppose. Um, and uh, so my local sponsor um, was very kind to basically hook me up with one of these. I played I played one of these and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so. Uh, loud and lots of great fingerstyle guitar players um, like John Gomm um, and Pierre Boon Susan. Um, I think lots of modern fingerstyle guys who play steel string guitar play play these, and uh, these are absolutely very very special. I love I love it to bits, and uh, so that's, that's when you when you when you say finger, what what do you mean when you talk if, when you when you're talking about finger style? Um, so it's it's playing playing with the fingers, um, but usually in conjunction with a pick or a thumb pick like these, um, and it's a much more modern type of percussive finger style type of playing where the guys hit hit the guitar and stuff as well as uh, pluck the strings. Right, right. And uh, it's yeah, it's very very different to the the traditional classical style of guitar, I suppose. So it's, it's so strumming like I was. See, I I actually took guitar my senior year. It's one of the reasons I wanted to see Segovia. Uh, don't ask me sure. to play anything, um, but I, I did get to the point where I could. I was playing some fairly complicated uh, classical stuff, but I didn't keep up with it once I got into college. So that's 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 just nice memories. But um, uh, but <laughs> that for, I would like to see. Yeah, but I but I definitely noticed when. What, would you say it was like a little mini concert you did before I spoke at the church, or I I, I don't know. Uh, you did a, a yeah. couple of different numbers. Right, yeah. So uh, the, the event that you spoke at was an outreach event. So it wasn't for the church people; it was for the right um, for the community. And so I think um, that, that they they kind of you know sent out the clowns to entertain the the crowd before the <laughs> before, before, the, before the, the serious speaker came. And so that was me. And uh, I, I played I, two numbers to calm everyone down. I think I have no idea why I remember this. But I just remembered what I ate before I spoke there. Oh, okay. And what, what was that? Well, it was one of the very few times, and I mean very few times, in all of my trips to South Africa. And I've gone, gone to South Africa a lot, a lot of times. Um, it was one of the very few times I actually ate at a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes, that's right. I remember that. And you called it a Kentucky. You, you asked for a, a chicken sandwich, and no one had no any idea what you were talking about. I uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember how that happened. But uh, they just call it KFC <laughs> down there. It's, it stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Doesn't anyone ever ask what KFC stands for? I don't know. We we we, we yeah, we, we're good with that. But it, we call them burgers. Uh, so so a sandwich a sandwich is like between two pieces of bread for, uh, for us down here. So just <laughs> it's quite different. They were like the people who were going to the back saying, "How do we make a sandwich for this guy? You know, what, what is he talking about?" <laughs> well, that happened to me. That happened to be in, in Glasgow, Scotland too. I asked for, at a McDonald's for a fillet of fish sandwich, and it's fillet. Yeah. In Glasgow, and they had no idea what uh, I was talking about. Some some nice lady had to sort of. I think he means fillet, and it's like, oh, okay, sorry <laughs> about that. But that's what happens when you travel. But there, there, yeah. there you go. So, so anyway, so um, uh, I just like watching. Here's the problem, though, Rich. Is there some way to turn the bug off? Be because it's right over his fingers, and I can't see what's going on. So if there's some way to kill the bug, we have this, you know, the Alpha Omega Ministries thing down along the bottom of the screen. 
So, oh, sure. And so it's right uh, in the middle of the of the uh, of the guitar. So that's uh, that's okay. why I'm trying I to get involved and move, we, move the screen. We got it. We got it. We, we got it. We okay, killed it. Cool. it. It's out of the way. So okay. One of the things I was going to say is I noticed, and this must vary from guitar to guitar. When you were playing before I spoke, there were a number of times you would flex the guitar. Oh, <laughs> you mean like like bend? bend yeah, the neck? you were you, you, oh, you, yeah, you yeah. were flexing it to create a uh, some kind of a sound issue. Um, yeah. Do, so obviously that's going to vary from guitar to guitar. There's going to be some that are very stiff, aren't they? Y yes, and uh, the 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 prevailing uh, sentiment with that is don't try that on a Chinese instrument because you'll you'll break the guitar. So basically, <laughs> um, the the. Uh, the idea is I grew up playing electric guitar. I grew up playing a Stratocaster. So I'm used to ha having a whammy bar where you can um, depress the strings and lower the lower the the pitch of the strings. So you get like a um, you know like a you, the the pitch drops and goes back up. And uh, with acoustics, you don't have that. But I still wanted the sound. So I saw um, I saw a guitar player from the Netherlands once, a great jazz guy. I can't remember his name, uh, but he uh, Anton Goldsmith, and he had a, a vintage Gretsch guitar, and he would push the neck forward and push the body back, which is really bad for the guitar, but it sounds great. So <laughs> you. <laughs> You know, like that, that kind of thing. Ah. And uh, you, you're basically bending the neck. Um, so that's why they say don't try that on Chinese instruments. And um, don't, or Chinese you know, viruses, either way. A, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> your guitar's not going to have a, a long life if you do that to it regularly. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. All right. So now, how many, how many albums have you, uh, have you done so far? Uh, I released my second album, um, uh, The Road Ahead, in May of last year. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so the first one, because I'm trying to remember, did you come to a debate that I was? Do how did we? How did we hook up? What was help? Yes. Help, help the old man out here. <laughs> um, you were debating Ayub Karim um, on the divinity of yes. well, the divinity of Jesus in the New Testament. Yes, and um, it was that was a fun evening. And, you sat on uh, the left hand I, side, about two or three rows back. That's it. Uh huh. Uh, uh huh. And at interval, um, you came down and you, you to to chat to some of us who'd come to the debate. Right. And uh, I had a CD to to give you because I because I did thank you in the liner no yep. liner notes yep. of that album. Yep. 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 That's right. I, well, I knew I knew about the liner notes. I was just trying to remember how I had gotten hold of it, and it had to be down there in uh, in the Durban area. And Ayub and I have done I think three debates down there now in that in that particular area. So that was. The first one that we did, yeah, because the second one was the crucifixion one. So, yeah, okay, all right, there, there, there we go. Was I wearing a bow tie that night? Oh yes, you were. Okay, all right, that that helps. That <laughs> that helps put put us in the <laughs> in the in the in the realm there. So, so you were there supporting me, and uh, then we uh, uh, at some later trip we arranged to uh, do something there at the church and. Uh, and that's yeah. how that all worked out. Okay, it's it's. And, and I organized you a uh, concept two rower. I remember that. That's right. That's right. Uh, in the little place that I stayed at. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, I remember going for a run there and stuff like that. I don't remember exactly where it was, but um, couldn't do that now. Yes. No, no. no. You, you'd, you'd get a 5,000 rand fine and maybe go to jail. 5,000 rand fine. Wow. What's that? What's that? Three, $300 odd? Um, I forget what the, I don't know what the transfer rate is right now, but it's... it's uh, it, it hit 19, 19 rand to the dollar last week. Oh, that's not good for you yeah. guys. It's, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so uh, you... Uh, you have a wide range of of musical styles. What would you What would you like to to show off? Uh, <laughs> I will play uh, my. I think the first one I'll play for you is a song that I composed um, two weeks ago. So, oh. uh, yeah, I, I I had a strange incident. A guy. Uh, so, like, I, I told the story to some people, and they said that's hectic. And I I, I haven't realized how hectic the story is. But a, a guy pulled a gun on me in a shopping center two weeks ago. Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, he was he was so panicked by the um, by the, the the lockdown, and it, you know he just had no sense of what to do with his life, and so he he walked around and he he showed me that he was carrying, and 
he said, would you like a bullet? And I said, no, thank you, sir. And then he said, well, would you put one in me? And I was oh. like, no, uh, yeah. So it was quite something. And the experience, um, the experience, you know, it inspired me. So I wrote a song. So I would, I'll play that for you guys now. Okay. Cool. So what do you call that? I haven't got a name for it yet. <laughs> I'm not sure. What, what, what do you call a piece of music that you write after an experience like that? Uh, there must be, uh, you know, I, I could understand uh, a tremendous amount of hopelessness um, right. in South Africa to begin with. I mean, I've, I've ministered in the townships, I've, I've preached in churches uh, in in Tambizi and and uh, and other of the townships, which uh, people mm -hmm. in the United States have a hard time uh, even comprehending, you know, the nature of some of those places. Um, I try to ex explain it to them, and the closest thing I can do is try to see if they've seen um, District Nine, the the movie, uh, yeah. which was shot in Soweto. Um, and go. That's actually Soweto. That's that's yeah, that's what that's it, actually it. That's what it looks like. And they're like, no. They. It's like no. As far as the eye can see, that's that's where people live. And so, then yeah. lock them down to where they cannot work. They cannot move. Um, wow. Uh, I can certainly understand why there's a tremendous amount of. Um, uh, would it, would you call it panic or despair or what would what would you call it? Um, definitely, there, there has been uh, huge amounts of uh, panic. There's been lots of panic buying. I think the you know the toilet paper thing that yeah. was lots of people have been buying too much toilet paper here as well, <clears throat> and uh, empty fridges, uh, food food sections in department stores are totally empty. Well, not they have been empty for for no good reason because the shops just fill them up again. Um, so there has been some panic, um, and yeah, a lot of lot of hopelessness and a lot of um, defiance as well. I think from People in poorer areas, um, they, they, uh, to an extent, view that the government has let them down by uh, the circumstances that they live in. Right. Um, and so they say, well, you know, the government, we, we're here where we are because of what the government's done. And now the government's locking us down and they're sending the army in to enforce this. And so we've lost our jobs because of the government and the government aren't, uh, you know, aren't helping us out. And so we're just not going to listen to the um to the lockdown orders. So a lot of news footage you see, uh, the townships look more packed than ever. So instead of it being them being empty, they actually are fuller than ever. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. So. Well, yeah, because a lot of people. Uh, I, I'm I'm thinking of. I, I don't remember the name of the road that goes to Pachisroom from Johannesburg, but it goes past. Uh, a lot of the township areas, and a lot of those people would travel out and work in mines and stuff like that, which I imagine are not operating right now. And so they're just stuck where yeah. they were. But you you can't you can't stay inside a corrugated iron hut that the roof is held on with with tires all day long. It's it's it, not going to exactly. happen. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm comfortable where where I am. Uh, we're very comfortable, but. But to have five people in, you know, a, a little room is, right, uh, right. Where, they, where they sleep is impossible. Well, not only that, it's a really, really, really good way to pass a virus around. Uh, that's that's uh, the problem it, with all of that. So that's, yeah, that's, if, if, if there's one way you are going to pass the virus around, that's how you do that's it. That's how you do it. That's exactly right. It is <laughs> it is absolutely amazing to me what's what's going on all around the world. But um yeah, the, the things are changing. So I don't, I'm not sure what. Uh, maybe we'll have some folks suggest some titles for you. Um, uh, as, yes, please. Uh, I need all the help I can get with that. Because <laughs> I hate doing. When people ask me, I speak at churches. What's the title of your sermon? I'm like, I have no earthly idea. That is never <laughs> ever something that I've I've liked coming up with. It's like, well, just put the scripture passage, and we won't worry about it. And it's like, oh, that's really boring, but no, what can I say? So, yeah. yeah, so so that's the kind of acoustic... Um, uh, if I say Tim Snow, have you ever heard of Tim Snow? I have not. It, it, it's so weird. Uh, he did one album, and it was incredible. And then, poof! Like like beamed off the planet. I mean, if anything proved Men in Black is true, I think I think he was an alien <laughs> beamed in, did his thing, and went back to whatever galaxy he was coming from. Um, uh, very, what you just played would have a lot of similarity, very very similar tonal qualities to uh, the stuff okay. that he did. If you ever get a chance to track him down, that one album, it was it was it was just really 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 good. That's the kind of, of stuff that I like. Um, uh, you know Jason Truby, so you yeah. know that he does a wide variety of stuff too. And so I've put together, like, I have a mix of your acoustic stuff and his acoustic stuff. And that's what I'll listen to while writing or working on stuff. Um, because it's some of the only music that I can listen to that's not going to get in the way of the thought process, in essence, uh, is is how it works. I'm not sure how you design that kind of thing. Um, I'm not. I'm sure you would recognize, you know, in light of uh, what kind of chord progressions you're doing or whatever, um, the kind of music that you can listen to while thinking, and the kind of music you can listen to while you don't want to think. <laughs> you want you want to be totally taken yeah. over by the music. Um, uh, but yeah, that kind of I don't know how to describe what you just play, but that's that's right in the in the wheelhouse of the kind of stuff that I I listen I'm listening to almost all the time when I'm working. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so, but you have other styles. Don't feel like you have to do that. Um, you have yeah, uh, you, absolutely. You've done a lot of. You were doing a, a number. Okay, Rich is Rich is raising his microphone, and when Rich raises the microphone, that means Rich wants to talk. So yes, Rich. Well, I I am. <laughs> I have to say that I, uh, I, I was moved by you mentioning Chet Atkins because okay. um, where I grew up, uh, Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed, Flatt and Scruggs, oh, yeah. um, those kind of uh, guitar men uh, were, were the kind of things I was exposed to uh, growing up. And I just, uh, oh, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Um, Oh, he was tremendous. Uh, it'll come to me in a little bit here, but uh, you know th those kinds of influences. Uh, I can mm. I can just hear even in that one piece. Yeah, uh, Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed um, are they? They're some of my biggest heroes. I uh, love those guys, and especially Jerry Reed. If if your listeners haven't ever checked out Jerry Reed, he was the most phenomenal um, human being. I think he he came up with these genius guitar compositions, which which are impossible to play. And he would like just figure out how to play them, and then he passed them on to Chet Atkins, so Chet Atkins could record them and make them famous. And <laughs> he wasn't, so he liked thinking them up and was too lazy to learn to play them. Right. And I, I'm thinking of um, there were there were three guys that were on he, when I was growing up. Hee haw, hee haw, yeah. And um, the one guy he had the long side. Yeah, burns, I know, I know. He, and, I can and, see him. And he was just a tremendous guitar player, let alone uh, uh, singer. Mill Travis. Um. 
You think of Merle Haggard? Uh, Merle Travis. I'm not familiar with him. Uh, it'll it'll come okay. to me here. It, it's but I'll, I'll I'll pipe back in a little later here. <laughs> Someone did come up with a suggestion for you. Um, uh, okay. Uh, a song title from Philippians four eight. Whatsoever things are. Whatsoever things are. So that Micah, Micah and Twitter said, whatsoever things are. So in other words, whatsoever things are honest, true, just, pure, lovely, etc. Oh, okay. from, from Philippians 4.8 is uh, uh, what, he, what he suggests. So I thought I'd pass that along uh, yeah. as, a, as a suggestion. Um, yeah, that's brilliant, because that's, that's what I was thinking of. R- Roy Clark. Roy, 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 okay. uh, I, just, I, I looked it up. Roy Clark was... Uh, uh, incredible. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, some of the things on YouTube here. One of my favorite all-time songs is Yesterday. Yeah, okay. Yesterday, oh. when I was young. Please don't do that okay, now, Rich, no. Please. Anyway, but <laughs> stop. He, he was just, as, but as a guitarist, he, he was tremendous. You can also play banjo real well, too. Foggy Mountain Breakdown and stuff like that. Yeah, so he was, he was, he was really good. So, um, we've kept you for quite a while already. What, do you, what, what else did, did you want to Share with us real, 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 uh, as far as the uh, styles go, because you were doing something on the Facebook thing that was making your fingers move a whole lot faster than than my fingers can move. So, um. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I well, so so uh, Jerry Reed and Chet Atkins were very influenced by um, a great great guitar player by the name of Mill Travis, and Mill Travis was a really cool dude from the from the fifties. Big cowboy hat, big white guitar and a thumb pick and he was the coolest cat around and uh, so uh, I could play I could play you a, a medley of songs by Mill Travis I suppose whatever you're whatever you're up for okay okay let me just get, get this guitar nice and out of tune for you okay how do you do that H- how do I do that well it's, I thought it's there was basically... only one way to have it in tune well, I, in fairness, this is all I do every day. So <laughs> if I didn't know how to do that, there should be cause for concern. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll, I, so I, I'm just warning you. I'm warning you guys ahead. I'm going to sing in this one. So Uh-oh. apologies in advance. Uh, hey, I'd rather have you doing it than Rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a fellow mighty lucky by the way he makes a guitar moan Hanging around, sitting around a country store He's a picking up chicken, he's a picking up corn Every cow in the county does a little shimmy And the feet start to wiggle and wag The feet start moving through the shuffle and drag Every time they hear the rhythm of the guitar rag He gets a moaning tone He gets a moaning groan When he gets to beating and the plucking the strings Well he can make a deacon lay the good book down Skinny and they do a little shimmy and the feet start to wiggle and wag. The feet start moving to the shuffle and drag every time they hear the rhythm of the guitar rag.
Well, Rich was. I was. I was watching Rich. Uh, he was watching those fingers going. Now, now, if someone tied your foot down, would you be, be just left uh, incapable of doing it? I. I don't know, but I wouldn't be as happy doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine so. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do seem to recall that your foot was was moving fairly fairly well during the uh, during when I was there live. So yeah, it's sort of like yeah. asking an Italian person to speak without moving their arms. It's just not going to work too well. Right. And also, you, you know, uh, James, sometimes when you're on a big stage, it gets lonely up there um, when you're playing solo acoustic guitar. So um, any energy I can give off to people, um, it, it makes me feel less lonely. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, you yeah. bet. You bet. So um, now when we uh, we put this up, I'm going to uh, include a, a link. Um, uh, you have, uh, I think it's a, either PayPal or Patreon or both. I'm not sure which, but obviously... Um, it's pretty tough to be a performer and uh, locked in a room. Uh, so that was one of the reasons we wanted to <laughs> let people know. Now, is are your are your albums on like um, iTunes and stuff like that? Yeah, they're they're, they're online uh, everywhere. So Apple Music, Deezer, Spotify. Um, if you just look up Seb Goldswain, then both my albums come up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So if people have seen you there, um, one last thing, real quick. Um, uh, the state of you know, I, I haven't had a lot of contact. I've, I've, I've been keeping in contact with Rudolph a little bit. Um, mm. I've, I've had, but I, and, and Adrian down there in, uh, in Durban a little bit on, on Facebook. Uh, everybody's just, you know, locked away doing their thing. Um, but the state of the church in light of its inability to meet, are most of the people trying to stream? Is that tough for people to do there? What's how are you all handling the lockdown as far as worship and instruction and and right. uh, ministering to the people? Right. Um, so in um, in my church, uh, I think in in Hillcrest, Hillcrest is quite an affluent area. So um, in lots of the lots of the communities um, of believers that I see, um, they've taken to the the live streaming thing um, pretty well. Um, uh, so lots of churches have hopped f fully onto live streaming services and, you know, z having prayer meetings on Zoom and ho home groups, uh, cell groups, uh, Bible studies, I suppose, on um, on Zoom. So they've taken to it pretty well, I think. So in our church, um, the big challenge has been trying to get old folks uh, onto platforms so that they can right. view content. So right. we're uploading content um, every single day. Um, so I do, I do like a hymn sing once a week where I'll sing, sing through some hymns with Brittany, my wife and interact with comments and stuff like that. And it's a way of trying to pull the church together. Um, but there's no, there's no doubting that, um, that folks are, I mean, we've been locked down for three weeks now. So the churches haven't been allowed to gather. They, they had like a, a, a social distancing rule for two weeks before that. So I think this is now five weeks, four or five weeks of no church, mm. uh, no church gatherings. So we're really feeling it and really missing it. And last there, week they extended the lockdown by another two weeks. So, um, so it, it a lot of people are starting to you know uh, uh, get a little bit get a little bit too anxious. Uh, I think. Yeah. Um, so so is there uh, so what's the what's the date that they're giving you now down there? Um, so well, today was meant to be uh, April the sixteenth was meant to be the day that the lockdown ended, and they've extended it by two weeks until the end of April. So what's that? The twenty twenty ninth or the thirtieth right, of right. of April, right. um, pending further uh, extensions. Oh yeah, yeah, pending further extensions. Yeah, we yeah. We're, we're facing similar situations uh, here, though we do have uh, far more freedoms, far more freedoms than uh, than you have in South yeah. Africa, unfortunately. So. So I won't ask you to predict the future uh, because that's not something that any of us are really all, all that uh, all that good at. Um, but I know that uh, South Africa has always presented um, a whole host of challenges uh, to evangelical Christianity that is very difficult for people in the United States to even begin to comprehend. Uh, but it would seem to me like music might be almost a universal language that allows you to get past a lot of the um, uh, barriers that exist. Um, I mean, you know, obviously, tremendous uh, uh, divisions in history between whites and blacks and Indians. Um, uh, and, of course, yeah. then you have people coming from other nations in Africa, that, and there's all sorts of divisions and strife there. 
it's um it's a really 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 challenging place to try to uh, create a unified body um and yet yeah. i've been in so many churches where that's exactly what what does exist and, and and that's been really great for me to be able to see that and appreciate the foundation upon which it's uh, which it's built uh, do you see the church coming out of this um changed um damaged um what what do you think um i think the true church will flourish exponentially uh i, d I don't doubt it i think uh like in in speaking in in our local context um a lot of people are really, really beginning to see the value of the local church in their life mm. now that they don't have it. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I think amongst true believers, uh, it's p probably one of the biggest blessings our generation is ever going to have. Mm. Um, in terms of, uh, so as you would know, a lot of South African Christianity, I mean, it's influenced by and mixed with a lot of African traditional religion. Right. right. So, um, so that's it's a huge, complicated mess of worldviews that are mixed together, and um, I don't even I don't even know how those kind of guys are handling um, the yeah. COVID nineteen, uh, how they de how they're handling with the lockdown. I don't imagine it would be good. And then there's the prosperity. Um, churches. That's huge. Uh, oh, that's yeah. a, America's biggest export to South Africa. I think is the uh, is the Sorry prosperity gospel. <laughs> Sorry about no, that. <laughs> I think it's equally from America and Nigeria. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. And I I just I I mean it's same as the 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 American guys. I think they they have nothing to say in a in a situation like this. No. They they prove themselves false over and over and over again. The more they the more they talk and. So I hope that for the mega churches where people gather to have their ears tickled, um, now they can't gather, and by having services online, they'll realize what's the point in even going to church. So I think that this will have nothing but a good effect in terms of um, refining the church. Well, I churches think. churches that are actually preaching the whole counsel of God, and uh, that that counsel is not dependent upon the economic situation and uh, political situation and things like that. I my I'm just Correct. concerned. I mean, South Africa's political climate is not a healthy one to begin with. Um, so, no. unfortunately, you give a already corrupt government more power, and they don't like letting go of it. And that's that's a concern all around the world. It really is. So, we will continue right. to pray for you guys down there and for uh, your church there. I really, honestly, like you said, I. Uh, I think once you've visited a place as many times as I have, you sort of get used to it. I mean, we're just going to do a quick hop down uh, in May. Uh, I was going to be going to uh, Joburg and uh, and uh, Cape Town. Uh, you know, all that got got nixed. Uh, but um, I will definitely take it uh, as a as a greater privilege uh, the next time uh, if I get an, a next time. And uh, if we get down to yeah. Durban, uh, you know what? I, the last time I was in Durban, you were you were traveling. You were out of country, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, that's when I was in Nashville, right? Yeah, at exactly yeah. the same time. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, because I I did get to preach there in um, in in Durban, but we weren't able to do anything because uh, you were you were gone. So we will hope that that can change in the in the future so um absolutely and, and we'll pray for your your church down there and uh for you as well and uh keep on uh, uh, uh picking and grinning and strumming and writing and uh let us know what you uh name that name and try to you know the, the guys with the guns it's best to avoid them that's uh, if if possible um yeah uh, yeah <laughs> I mean, you got to go to the grocery store, you. but still, uh, groceries, groceries, yeah. guns. They, they, I'm not sure they go together real well. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll <laughs> let everybody know how to get hold of you, Seb. And thanks for joining us today. And uh, uh, thank your wife for letting you stay up so late. <laughs> I will do. Thank you for having me. This has been a real privilege and uh, like a, like a dream come true. So thank you indeed. All right, thanks a lot. God bless you. <laughs> thanks.